Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on the Fair Compare Weekly Video Podcast, episode number 19. Looking forward to number 20 next week and 100 a few years from now. So uh, checking that out. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to chat a bit about a few interesting topics. Uh, one are sort of our perennial magic day to fly, in our case, the worst day to fly. Uh, we're going to talk about domestic Caribbean beaches, Atlantic, transatlantic flights, and even uh, trans-Pacific flights. We're also going to talk a little bit about how you can actually get a ticket when you are broke, broke, broke. We've seen that many times uh, around, you know, when you only have a certain very low budget to fly, but you want to get out of town. Got some good options there and some, some tips around that and we'll also take a customer question as well after that so let me introduce our editor from uh, faircompare.com who does all the editing on the site and uh, also on the our native app adventurist which i noticed came out with some new content and mcdermott hey Ann. hey rick what i especially love about your annual it's become an annual magic yeah, things sure. to fly is that it not only tells you when to fly the best days to fly it tells you what days to avoid and you know that's just as important yeah, no, look, I mean, it's important that people know when airlines have sometimes their seasonal break points, sometimes they're related to certain events. Um, in this case, if you look at domestic travel, uh, what you have is three dates in March, May and June where prices can go up by anywhere from 5 to 15%, and that's cumulative total. So let's just assume it's 10 for the moment. Uh, that would be almost a 30% increase as we head into summer. And those dates are, uh, oddly enough, uh, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. That's when the price jumps. By the way, if you happen to travel on March 16th uh, domestically, you will get the cheaper prices. That Those are departure dates, too. I want to make sure everybody's aware as we talk about these magic dates. These are about travel dates. You should be buying your tickets for the at least for the March dates right now, and and to some degree you should be waiting just slightly for the May 17th uh, dates where the price jumps again. So May 16th it's a little cheaper, and then of course when kids uh, get out of school, the airlines smack you right up to the head on June the 10th with another hike. Now there is a couple good news is that on August the 1st. They do drop the prices on some of the weekdays. That's Monday through Friday. And then finally, on August uh, the 23rd, they actually drop the prices for the entire week, including the weekends. Okay, so if you are planning your summer vacation, uh, it would it seem to me to make the ultimate sense to make it as late as possible in the season, in August anyway. Yeah, if you can, certainly. I mean, if you're if you're traveling for summer, late summer is better. And if you can do early summer before June 10th, it's way better as well. So you don't want to get caught up in uh, basically airlines making their big summertime push for, for higher airfares. We did see an airfare hike uh, last week of uh, $6 round trip. That's the equivalent of like your grocery store raising all the prices in the entire store just mm -hmm. under 1%, not just milk or some of the products inside here. And you know, the days that you leave are sort of like, uh, you know, are important. They're just like products that are on the shelves at the store. Some of them are cheaper, some of them aren't. Um, you know, it'd be, it'd be kind of funny to watch somebody actually sit there with a with a, um, a price gun changing the price of Coke as you walked in the door. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> so, that's sort of how it works a little bit. So, but I, just, I just want to clarify one thing. You said these are departure dates. So, uh, in effect, like say you've got a spring vacation planned, if you leave uh, March 17th, you're actually going to pay more than if you left on March 16th. Exactly, yeah, that's okay. exactly right. So these are departure dates. Not you, Your travel does not have to be complete by these days. Um, now, you will, part of your trip, depending on how they price it, will actually end up being on the more expensive price, in, in some cases on the return part, but you'll get half the benefit at, at least, and some, in some cases you'll get the full benefit uh, of the cheaper inventory. Um, the thing that I would I would note as well is that the airlines know exactly when your spring break is. So whether it's March 17th, which is sort of the official, you know, St. Patrick's Day jump, if you happen to have spring break uh, like I do on March, uh, in early March, I think it's the week of the, the first week or second week in March before the 17th, the prices for the weekends for that spring break uh, trip are going to be much higher if you look at your particular spring break. So if you're early in spring break, you'll also be caught by this as well. 
Okay. Um, I know in the um, <clears throat> the post you're going to have for this uh, this week that's going to have all this information. You're going to cover. Uh, best times to go to Caribbean throughout the year, yeah. and also spring break dates. Um, if you, uh, what's the general rule for spring break? Is there a general rule? Well, the, I, the general rule for spring break is, and, it, and it's each school district's a little bit different. So it's really K through 12. So if your city's K through 12 major school system is, you know, the, let's say it's the second week in March, then the Saturday and Sunday and the Saturday and Sunday following that spring break week are going to be your most expensive days. For example, you know, Tuesday Saturday is always a really good itinerary. For example, um, during that time frame. So if you can get one of those weekdays in, you'll get a much cheaper flight. If you're going to go weekend to weekend, you're going to see the highest of the prices. But the um, the worst weekend is the weekend that kicks off the spring break week? Yeah. So basically it's going to be both ends of it, right? So it's going to be the Saturday and Sunday before. Those will be the outbound prices and the inbound prices and returning back home will be the, the following Saturday and Sunday will be the most expensive. So, you, you know, I, I particularly like the shorter spring breaks too, Monday, Saturday, or Tuesday, Saturday, for example. Um, and those tend to be, like in my case this year, you know, several hundred dollars cheaper. And returning on Saturday would be cheaper than returning on Sunday? Yeah, Saturday is a little bit cheaper than Sunday, but both of them are pretty expensive, right? There's a significant jump up on those two days. If, um, if somebody was planning on going to Europe, do these dates, uh, and I'm speaking about, you mentioned the domestic dates right off the top, you know, the, the March 17th where prices jump and the May 17th where prices jump, and then they drop August 23rd sort of across the board. Does that coincide with transatlantic flights too? It does. It almost exactly matches, which is actually odd. Last year, domestic didn't quite match that. Um, but we're seeing, and by the way, I, I looked at data from about, I don't know, almost a dozen and a half cities uh, looking at all during the entire year, L literally billions of different price points over uh, la last year's time period. So uh, it was a little bit odd to see what's happening today, which is a little bit different. But basically, you have the spring season, sort of the, you know, end of winter and then heavy spring and then sort of the drop after the summer season hits. Now we don't see that June 10th jump up um, for um, transatlantic. It's just May 17th. So May 17th through August 23rd is when the, the, the official summer occurs. We have a little bit of a bigger one on domestic at June 10th when kids get out of school. I know it's not possible for everybody, but I know you like going to Europe in the off season because I do, yeah. I actually like it in the fall. I like, you know, the September time frame, uh, you know, um, th th a couple reasons for that. In August, everybody in Europe's on vacation, so you're not getting the full flavor of all the people that are there when you're visiting. September, you do. You have things like Oktoberfest that actually occur in September in Germany, which is really fun uh, to do. So, um, you know, I don't really, I, I mean, and I've gone, for example, for Thanksgiving and Christmas before uh, to Europe. I, I would prefer it was a little bit warmer, but there's things to do as well when it gets cold out as well. Okay, Rick, it's right after the holidays and everybody's broke. Can you still take a trip? You know, we have an article up on the site that we talk a little bit about what to do in those particular cases. And the most important thing you can do is set up airfare alerts. Now, if you mm -hmm. sign up for airfare alerts, you'll also get deal alerts. And that's where you'll find some of these crazy low deals. Now, you don't see as much in the U.S. as you do in Europe with, with airlines like Ryanair and EasyJet. But in the U.S., you have, you know, Frontier. Um, Spirit doing some loose stuff. Now American saying they're going to match some of the Spirit really crazy low fares. Uh, Delta's, okay. been, Delta's been matching them as well. So um, you certainly want to shop early in this case, uh, three months in advance appro approximately to make sure you get the best deal as well. I just saw uh, some fares. Uh, there's a sale with Wow Air, which, as you may mention, is based yeah. in Europe, and it's an ultra low discount. Yeah, that's a transatlantic area. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco or Los Angeles uh, to uh, Iceland, Reykjavik, uh, 99 bucks each way. Well pronounced. <laughs> you, you even rolled the R for that Reykjavik. I like that. Um, the um, 
Yeah, no, it's, I mean, you have WOW and you have Norwegian Air Shuttle that are flying some yeah. transatlantic. I mean, Ryanair has been sort of uh, beating the drum saying they'd like to do it at some point. Uh, that may happen in the next few years. The other thing I would note, too, is whether you're flying domestic where Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday are the cheapest days to fly or international where midweek is actually much cheaper than weekends. Um, you, that's what you should consider, too, when you're broke. And, you know, I think that the key there is to be really flexible on – um, you know, what kind of flights, you know, one stop, two stop, if you're going international. I've seen people even get three stop, two stops, uh, even in the U.S., if you're going coast to coast, can be uh, very cheap as well. So you may have to fly all day, but you can at least fly, um, you know, uh, with the cheapest amount of money. Now, the other thing, too, is you can't get, be hit by bag fees and carry-on fees and some of these other things, especially when you get to Frontier and Spirit. So be sure and know what their packing rules are so that you don't get hit with those fees. The other thing is, uh, speaking of the low-cost carriers, don't go there and expect, you know, of course they will have the cheapest flight. You always have to compare, right? You have to compare. I mean, comparison shopping is your best friend out there. It helps you sort of see if there's any difference between airlines. And also, really, honestly, inventory changes so quickly. Um, certain sites can have different prices. Some of them may have, especially on international fares, they may have discounts and contracts. So you do have to aggressively comparison shop. Well, and I, I recall a, an ABC column you did not too long ago, and you proved that a Spirit, for example, does not always have the cheapest fare in front of you. Look, I mean, nobody fare. has it at any given yeah. time. I mean, everybody thinks, you know, they're the, the quote-unquote lowest fare airline. They all try to match each other when they can, and in some cases, some are more expensive than others. Uh, it's a complicated business, you know, airfares from every city, um, and, uh, you know, we see prices jumping all over the place all day long. I was just looking at the data for from today, um, you know, prices are all over the board, especially since we had that hike last week. So, um, you know, something to think about as you get on the site. We're going to walk you through that stuff, so check out the blog. It's time for your favorite part of the podcast. We have a question from a viewer. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is right up your alley. It's from Stevie in Dallas, who says, I'm traveling internationally for the first yep. time, actually taking a cruise in the Mediterranean. And I want to get the most info about currency exchanges. Should I use my credit card or just get cash? Should I get cash before I go or while I'm there? And is there a trick that I can get the best exchange rates? Uh, obviously, Stevie wants to stretch dollars and uh, understand it. <laughs> Well, first of all, I don't want to turn Stevie into a currency exchange trader <laughs> uh, on foreign exchange trade. But uh, so let's not try to arbitrage, you know, the dollar versus the, well, depending on where she's going, mostly the euro there if she's going to be in the Mediterranean. Yeah. Um, but, and by the way, great rates right now. The dollar is extremely strong. Now here, I'll tell you exactly what I do when I get there. I don't really take cash on European trips. I mean, I might take a few hundred dollars, just what I would normally carry around anyway. So as soon as I hit the airport, uh, well, before I actually leave, I contact my my bank and many banks that are there that, to tell them that I'm going to be leaving the country with my credit cards and with my ATM, so they'll all work. Uh, many times in the case, I have you know apps on the phone that I can just press a button. It tells them and asks where you'll be. So you want to do that. As soon as you hit the airport, take a few hundred dollars out in the local currency from the ATM machine. Almost every one of them has an ATM machine. That's why I actually carry the $200 in cash. A few airports don't. Um, that you would land in, and you, you need to do get, get some local currency depending on where you're going. Um, and, and then use your credit cards. Now, I will note that a lot of credit cards do not have free foreign transaction fees. Uh, many of them do. You need to check out. I use one that has free foreign transaction fees. That can add up to, you know, I've seen them as sort of low as 1.5% and as high as 35 or 4% as transaction fees. You don't want to go gallivanting all over Europe, you know, using that credit card, and then find out that you, you've racked up four or five percent in transaction fees. If your app uh, doesn't work for something like that, or to tell you, give you can you call them. Yeah, you can call your bank and or, or your credit card. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you don't want that card to be cut off. It's really inconvenient, especially because our system's different. We don't really – now, some of our new cards have chips, but we don't really use pins in the U.S. They do use their – they still use the swipe mechanism, but you don't want your card to be cut off. And you have to list – on most of them, you have to list the countries that you'll be in. 
I've uh, never had a problem with a credit card in Europe, and it, you know, it, it, you know, things like traveler's checks are are way in the past. And yeah, like I that. haven't seen those in such a long time. I actually did my dad, my dad. I need to get some traveler's checks. We're going to go, and I'm like, I, I think you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll work on that next time. So um, so really, you know, you shouldn't be paying uh, anything on the exchange rates. You'll get, if you do it through your bank, they may charge you a slight fee. If you're doing it through your credit card, you'll get the then prevailing rate whenever the transaction occurs, uh, depending on the credit card you use. So make sure, uh, and by the way, even if a credit card has a $60 or $80 fee, for that many, year, many times it's the first year's wage for those credit cards um, and, and so you it's really a good savings and then if you if you don't use it the first year I guess you could cancel the card if you'd like and I guess you could drive yourself crazy trying to find the very very best exchange rate but uh, when I travel it's always been at the airport and and you um, can be rest assured the ones at the airport are the worst they're like a 10 or 15 percent <laughs> fee if you're exchanging so just know that you you have relative levels when you get to the airport you're gonna go I, sh I could have sworn the euro was a dollar eight and not a dollar twenty <laughs> Yeah. Uh, for the exchange rate. So just be aware of that. Really use the ATM and use your credit card. Make sure you have the right information on both. And if anybody else has a question for Rick about anything to do with travel, uh, please let him know at customer.service at faircompare.com and he will be happy to tackle your issue. Yeah, sure, and, and I would note too that come check out the articles we talked about. These are all articles on the website. You can catch uh, the video podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, a variety of other platforms. And don't forget, we have the new iOS app with the new uh, Adventurous yeah. app with the new version out. Really awesome content. I was flipping through it actually this morning. I noticed the New York Marathon got added uh, in the last few days uh, to the events. Uh, so just faircompare.com slash app when you're in your browser on your phone take you right to the page uh, either uh, looking for the Google Play Store or uh, the iOS uh, App Store. So check that out and uh, we'll catch you on podcast number 20 next week. <laughs>